Uh, welcome to the Armani Talks YouTube channel. I'm your host, Armani Talks. In this channel, I'm covering communication skills for you to level up your world with words and become much more articulate. In today's episode, we're entering the world of storytelling and we're going to be breaking down my favorite movie of all time, Interstellar. From the get-go, I want to say something. This video is not going to be for everyone. There's probably a large group of people who have watched Interstellar before and they're like, Armani, that movie is overrated and let me give you a few reasons as to why it's overrated. This video is not for you. This video is more so for the people who have watched Interstellar not once, not twice, but more than two times. And each time they watch it, each time they're compelled by it, they can't quite put it into words as to why Interstellar is so powerful, but something about this movie is magical. And in today's episode, I'm going to be using the theory from my book, The Art and Science of Storytelling, which is currently available on Amazon. I'm going to drop the link for the book in the description box and the pinned comment right now below. I'm going to be using the theory from this book and applying it to Interstellar to talk about why this movie was so freaking impactful. And by us understanding what made Interstellar so magical, we're going to be able to get the core storytelling concepts from this movie and we can apply it to our lives. We could use it for our YouTube videos, our speeches, our PowerPoint presentations, and much more. If you're ready and excited for today's talk, go ahead and drop that like for me right on below. So I'm gonna just give you a brief synopsis of the plot. I'm not gonna get too specific, especially if you're considering watching the movie, uh, but this movie is placed in year 2067. Earth is not looking good at all. It's pretty much uninhabitable at this point. And the main character is played by Matthew McConaughey, who goes by the name Coop or Cooper in the movie. Cooper back in the days used to be this top tier engineer, a top tier pilot for NASA. But at this stage, due to the travesty on Earth, he's being forced to be a farmer. Later on in the movie, he's contacted once again by NASA and he's given the option to fly a rocket ship into space to find a habitable planet. As he's looking for a habitable planet in space, NASA is going to be working on systems to make sure that they can transport the citizens of Earth into this new planet. And this is pretty much how the story goes. The watchers of the movie were taken on a journey. Is Coop going to find the right planet? Are they gonna make it in time? What's going to happen? Cooper is going to be separated from his children. I mean, there's an emotional side to this as well. And that's pretty much how the story begins. The first lesson that you can learn from the art of science of storytelling that applies to Interstellar is the importance of having a relatable character. I'm sure you've heard of the hero's journey many times. And for me personally, I get tired of that sometimes. Anytime I'm going on Google and I want to learn more about storytelling, the first thing that comes up is the hero's journey. If something keeps on coming up, that means it's important. And the way that we want to understand the hero's journey from a different angle is that we want a relatable character. In this book, I talk about how to create a relatable character. You need a flawed character. You want to embrace imperfections. See, with Cooper, he used to be a great engineer and an astronaut, and nowadays, he's a farmer. Now, nothing against farmers, by the way, but in this situation, can you break down what the human parallel is? I mean, what about Cooper's situation talks about the human struggles? If you were to ask me, this is a man who's not living his dreams. This is a man who feels like he had his vision stripped away from him. And oftentimes, a vision can be stripped away from a person due to one or two of the following reasons. One reason is due to internal. This is known as self-sabotage. Maybe this person didn't have the right work ethic. Maybe this person was overly negative. Maybe this person had 
bad habits. That's internal. The external reasons that the dream will be taken away is because someone else went out of their way to take you down. Someone else became a competition. Groups of people tried to take you down. Or in Cooper's case, the environment. Earth is simply not habitable at this point. That means he needs to become a farmer because this is now a highly sought after job. So this was an external circumstance that made Cooper change his life path. And as we progress in the movie, when he's given that opportunity once again to be an astronaut, it stokes that childlike spirit in him. He's once again being reconnected back with his vision of being in the stars. So this is another part that I think is highly important. And this is one thing that you want to understand. Your character that you're creating should not be perfect. It should remind people of their own flaws, their own insecurities, their own worries. And only then can you have the right character for the hero's journey. That's number one. The second lesson that you want to understand is a lesson that John Lasseter from Pixar would say multiple times. You want to create a universe that seems like it could be real, but it's not necessarily real. This is how Pixar has been able to get away with uh, making a movie like Toy Story. We know damn well that toys can't talk, but in an alternate world, just imagine if toys can talk. Now, this is the beginning of Toy Story. Likewise, with Interstellar, I'm pretty sure in year 2067, Earth isn't going to get that bad. But humor me for a second. Imagine that it did. And that's exactly what Interstellar is getting to us. It's trying to get us to envision a world that we're currently taking for granted. I mean, Earth is one of the best planets in the entire solar system, especially for humans. And how often do we take the time to appreciate it? The director of the movie is poking at that. It's like, you're not taking it, uh, you're not appreciating it at all at this point. I mean, you take it for granted, but imagine this world in 2067 where people can't live properly. People are having to quit their dreams, their jobs to become farmers so they can work more on crops. I mean, this is a world that I wouldn't say is like, oh, this is completely impossible. But instead, it's making me think, no, I mean, I could actually see something like that happening. And that gets me invested into the movie. And I want to hear more from it. So in your scenario, as you're creating the story, you may want to think about, okay, Maybe I don't have to go that deep like Interstellar did or like Toy Story did, but how about I engage this audience member's imagination and I use phrases like, just imagine a world where such and such did such and such. By doing this little hack, automatically you're creating this brand new world, which ends up creating a brand new experience in the listener. That's point number two. And point number three, and this is something I bring up in the art and science of storytelling, which talks about to communicate with a human's experiences, engage their imagination and feelings, and you are set. The reason we want to engage their imagination and feelings is because as a storyteller, we want to speak to their primal side. And something is their primal side if they were never taught it. Did anyone ever teach you how to imagine? No. Did anyone teach you how to feel? No. Those are two components of a human that were always built in. And us as a storyteller, we want to engage those two parts. We want to engage their imagination and their feelings. Now, what does this have to do with Interstellar? If you were to ask me, Yo, Armani, what's better, Interstellar's plot or the soundtrack for Interstellar? I would say, Yes. And once again, you're going to be like, man, I asked you a very specific question. What's better, Interstellar's plot or the soundtrack for Interstellar? Once again, I would say yes. Do you know why? 
is because the soundtrack engages our feelings. Multiple times, I've introduced this movie to a variety of people, and multiple times, the soundtrack is so beautifully in sync with the actual movie, where these people that I'm introducing the movie to start crying. They start crying because Interstellar is engaging their feelings. I mean, yes, the imagination is engaged because they're watching the movie. I mean, obviously, they're seeing the screens. But the music is what's making them cry. It's coloring those imagery that they're seeing. A famous film director said that movies are just a dance of light and sound. So if you can correctly engage light and sound to your advantage, then you are going to be winning. So these are three lessons in regards to Interstellar that you can apply to your stories in the upcoming future. You want a relatable character. You could call that the hero's journey. You want to create a universe that seems somewhat realistic, and you want to use imagination and feelings to your advantage. Now, with that being said, do you want to understand more about storytelling from a completely different lens? If so, be sure to check out the art and science of storytelling to understand the theory behind the art. A true genius is capable of seeing the science behind the art and the art behind the science. So if you want to become a genius storyteller, get the art and science of storytelling today on Amazon or on the links in the description box and the pinned comment right on below. And thank you very much for joining the Armani Talks YouTube channel.